Vertical separation. Okay, so those are a couple of examples of work going on in Massive MIMO. Now I'm going to transition to wireless networks. And this is a pretty interesting area because uh, typically in this area, higher level networking protocols, much of the work is done purely in software and simulation. But as we seek to solve these kind of applications that I started off showing and highlighting, these machine to machine applications and Internet of Things applications, uh, where latency uh, is particularly important, uh, there's a lot of desire to look at uh, the effect of these networking protocols on the overall system performance and the real world performance. And there's also a desire to do more kind of cross layer optimizations and algorithms. Uh, so let me show you a couple of examples of that. One is a project that's funded by uh, the European Union called Crowd. And Crowd is examining um, the impact of things like software defined networks and dense heterogeneous networks on the overall performance of the system in areas like latency. Uh, and they have created a test bed for doing cross uh, la layer optimization algorithms and assessing their performance uh, using the platform that I highlighted. Another uh, similar area is research done by uh, PR Kumar at Texas A&M uh, University, just uh, a little bit up the street from where NI is located. In Texas, up the street's like a couple hundred miles, but it's close enough. Um, and, and what they're doing is Mac level exploration of algorithms for Mac design. But again, they want to look at the performance of the whole system in real world conditions. And so they're using this platform to basically create prototype uh, communication systems for this Mac exploration. Uh, a third area of really interesting research is in the area of multiple radio access technologies, or multi-RAT. Uh, and this is the idea of dynamically using different waveforms based on the application that's being done within 5G to optimize uh, the uh, uh, utilization of the, of, of the network. Um, so a couple interesting uh, applications here. Here's one from uh, Dr. Gerhard Fettweiss at TU Dresden. I saw him here this morning. Um, his lab uh, started off doing research on generalized frequency division multiplexing, or GFDM, using the same kind of prototyping platform. And they also realized a really important benefit, I think, of this platform-based approach, which is because they built that GFDM prototype on this uh, hardware and software platform, they're able to reuse those same components as a more holistic or generalized uh, 5G prototyping system to explore lots of other different areas of 5G as well. Uh, and in particular, they're doing a lot of work on these machine-to-machine, -machine, low latency communications, or what uh, Dr. Fettweiss likes to call the tactile uh, internet. Another really interesting one that's here, actually demonstrated here at the show at LG's booth, is a collaboration between LG and Yonsei University for full duplex communication. And this is pretty amazing. So of course, full duplex wireless, the idea of communicating transmit and receive at the same time over the same frequency uh, or same channel is pretty amazing. Um, you know, I was thinking when I saw this, I've got, I've got two preteen daughters. I don't know if anyone else has teenager or preteen daughter. So there's a lot of full duplex communication that happens at my house. Some of you know what, the, know what I mean by that. But uh, of course, in a wireless system, it's, it's, it's a little harder, right? And it requires a huge amount of real-time signal processing in order to be able to pull off this system. Uh, in the demonstration by Yancey, they use uh, an FPGA right behind the channel programmed with LabVIEW to do that real-time signal processing. Uh, and they're demonstrating here at the sh uh, in the expo a 1.9 um, X throughput improvement over half duplex. So very, very close to the theoretical limit of throughput increase using this full duplex prototype. Um, and another area, another uh, example is on non-orthogonal multiple access, and this is a really impressive prototyping test bed done by NTT Docomo that actually imp uh, implements the transmit and receive chains as well as real-time channel emulation to, again, explore the uh, actual performance of different techniques used for uh, NOMA, uh, NOMA or non-orthogonal multiple access. And finally, um, talk about millimeter wave. So, of course, as I mentioned, millimeter wave is really an emerging area with a lot of interest and research going on. Uh, and it really started uh, with a measurement application. So in order to start exploring millimeter wave, we first had to understand 
some of the path effects uh, and the channel at these frequencies. And so some of the early work on channel sounding was done uh, by Ted Rappaport and his team uh, at NYU Poly, and they used NI's platform to build that channel sounding system to characterize these millimeter wave channels um, in dense urban environments, which they have plenty of in Brooklyn. So what's interesting about this, though, to me, is that normally a channel sounding system would be good for pretty much just that, channel sounding. But when you build this uh, software definable platform, you're able to use those exact same components that are used for a measurement system to actually also build real world, real time uh, prototype or emulated systems. And so that's exactly what uh, Nokia did. So the same components used for that channel sounding system, Nokia has used to build a 5G millimeter wave uh, complete system prototype. And Nokia did this system in less than a year. And um, Dr. Amitabha Ghosh, uh, who I believe is here as well, commented that uh, this was less than half the time that it typically takes them to build this kind of prototype using traditional approaches. This system was demonstrated uh, publicly also at Mobile World Congress. That's what the pictures uh, on, on the slide are from. And so they had a demonstration in their booth of, again, an emulated uh, Enode B communicating at 73 gigahertz to uh, an emulated UE station. That UE station was actually put on a, a motion control system so it could move, and they were able to demonstrate the beam tracking and beam steering all being performed in real time on processors and FPGAs uh, inside of the PXI system. And in this demonstration received uh, or were able to achieve a gigahertz of bandwidth. Again, instead of hearing me talk about it, I wanted to take a couple of minutes and show you uh, a little bit about that system from Dr. Ghosh and his team at Nokia. Every industry will be using 5G, and especially we are seeing the huge applications of Internet of Things, starting from e-health, e-commerce, automation, manufacturing, agriculture, car industries. So Nokia is forecasting 10,000x increase in capacity demand by 2025 or later. So the industry has already adopted Nokia's view that 5G is about connecting people. So the industry and the requirements are already set based on Nokia's view. Nokia has been leading the pack by proposing new proof of concept system Three years back, uh, we were looking for partners to implement this Nokia's vision. We wanted to be ahead of the industry, and we were looking for a quick prototyping platform. So we looked at all the players and thought NI platform gave us the right perspective where we can implement our vision. With the National Instruments Equipment, it provides a visual programming environment that lets us program FPGAs that can work at very low latency. It provides a software definable radio where we can actually prototype our new radio much quicker than perhaps building it from parts on our own and lets us get the system out into the field that much quicker. Using National Instruments software defined radio platform, I think we were able to save a year's time instead of building the baseband components from scratch. And that's why Nokia was and I were the first to prove this concept in the field. I think the sky is the limit. So uh, the possibilities are here. So think of the value to uh, that organization and of course to our uh, community as a whole of saving a year of calendar time and being able to demonstrate that type of technology in the, in the real world. It's pretty remarkable. Looks like they might not have my, my slide up. So while they're while they're working, I'll, I'll add lib. Um, so uh, what I wanted to tell you a little bit more about that particular system, we actually have that system available uh, at the expo in the booth. The latest version of it uh, is a, a 73 gigahertz um, uh, link, uh, over the air link. Uh, it's at two gigahertz of bandwidth, and it's capable of an over the uh, air link of 10 gigabit per second. And it was really the first in the world to achieve that kind of data rate uh, over a, uh, a wireless link. And so if you want to see more about that particular system or other uh, systems that I've shown, uh, those are available for you to see. 
So let me summarize a little bit with what I've uh, shown here this morning. As I said in the beginning, uh, I showed you some examples of this platform-based approach that is used to go from an idea to a prototype very, very quickly and do real-world performance evaluation of these different kinds of technologies for 5G. And since we're in a, basically a race to figure out the wireless communication technology that's going to connect the next 50 billion devices onto our networks uh, and the clock is ticking, it's critical that we have a way to speed this time. And it's my own belief that the only way to be competitive is to have a platform-based approach in order to go from an idea to a prototype very, very quickly. So what I'm going to do is instead of taking questions here, I'm going to um, go ahead and hand it back over to the program chair and I will offer to hang out here afterwards to take some questions and then uh, you can always stop by our booth. Myself and my colleagues there would be happy to demonstrate these to you and talk to you about this capability. So with that, uh, thank you for your time here this morning and enjoy your time here at Globecom.